Hello YouTube, this is Sam Gerrans from quarternight.com. Today is Monday the 3rd of January 2022 and I'm going to get on with another one of these surahs between 50 and the end of the Quran. So we'll just jump straight in and see how we go. This is Surah 88. Has there come to thee the narrative of the enveloping? Faces that day will be humbled, toiling, exhausted, burning in a scorching fire, watered from a boiling spring. They have no food save of poisonous thorns, neither sustaining nor availing against hunger. So, obviously this is the Day of Judgment, and uh, the we're just going to get into the fact that this is a division, because this is the, the first portion of humanity. A um, couple of points has there come to thee the narrative of the uh, of the enveloping? And the word here is hadith. And the Quran does use the word hadith many, many times. And um, it says that it is the best hadith and, and so on. So it's, um, it's a little bit uh, disingenuous at least or a bit of subterfuge, misdirection for the traditionalists to say that, uh, you know, hadith means this. The Quran does use this word um, and it's... It, in some ways seems to anticipate the the later um, abuse of it um, by those who claim monopoly rights over this book. So that's one, one thought. Um, the next is that uh, they have no they have no food save of poisonous thorns. Um, now there are uh, uh, there is a number of um, of definitions for this word. This is one of the words in the Quran for which there are very few common roots. I'm not quite sure. Possibly, possibly just this one word. And so there's there's very little, if if anything at all, to sort of triangulate, as it were, within the context. Um, I would argue that what follows would be a would be at least an intimation of what's meant here. Neither sustaining nor availing against hunger. Okay, so that's that's the first part. So the reason why I mentioned sort of division or um, segregation into into two parts is because we're living through something similar now. We're living in a, in a, f a form of medical apart. Well, it is medical apartheid. There's nothing else you could really call it. Um, in the country that I live in, in Russia, they're now uh, putting it about that uh, banks are going to have different rates of interest or different different categories of uh, charges for people who who have or have not submitted to the the state religion and um, and various other things uh, th that isn't law yet so far as I, I know but they're they're kind of bringing this in so quite clearly we're living in a, in, a, in a period of Furqan to use Quranic parlance a division and in a way I, I what I've learned about the shaitan over the years is he's he's quite limited, and um, also he has seems to have this preoccupation with um, aping God, as it were. So if you look at the system that we're currently in, we have um, it's got a form of omniscience with total surveillance everywhere, and. Uh, a form of omnipotence, a form of it. It's not really it, but uh, you know, with total war and um, drone strikes, and you know, you can just be killed anywhere. All this sort of stuff. So it seems seems to me. Uh, I don't have you know like a direct line or anything, but it feels to me as if um, the people who are the, the core religionists of this religion and this. This, this what we what we're living within is is a religion. It's a cult. It's got various sort of strata. It's got the, the as I was describing in the last couple of videos about about liberalism. It's got the kind of plebeian the plebeian kind of um, mass cult of, of the uninitiated, the, the sort of um, telluric earth bound um, segment of the of the unwashed. Um, but you can be sure that as, as you go up up the greasy pole, as you get closer to the apex, there will be more esoteric levels to, to all of this. Excuse me. All that to say that what we're living through, in my opinion, 
it looks to me as if you know the, the the satanic system is trying as quickly as it can to to um, ape I can't think of a better word emulate um, the characteristics of God and this the reason why I started this is here we have a division a division into those who are on one side of a division and those who are on the other and as I say in the society that we're living through now for a long time we were kind of duped into this idea of a sort of laissez-faire uh, bourgeoisie it was anything but that they're creating <laughs> creating their their news their new um, approved and and uh, tried and tested slave castes what they're doing but what they're also doing is they're having to create a division which is what socialism always does if you haven't read any uh, Soviet history have a look see what how that all worked with um, Stukachistva this is a sort of like grassing like a whole system of people who because socialism works on envy it's one of the things that it that drives it and uh, that's what we're seeing in envy fear and suspicion this is kind of like this holy trinity of 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 everything that's soviet that's socialistic and that's what you'll see now in in the west as as well um all that to say under the soviet um incarnation of materialistic uh, atheism you had the the proletariat uh, and anybody who wasn't a member of the proletariat was part was part of the bourgeoisie, and they were the enemy. They 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 could be persecuted and were absolutely were. I mean, Russia went through, and not only Russia, the entire Soviet Union went through um, an ethnic cleansing, purging, and an in, an intelligence f uh, destruction of what you would call in intelligentsia. The word intelligent doesn't quite mean cultured, uh, uh, intelligent. It more means cultured, it, it, it really. But that was a form of abuse. In fact, it was a form of abuse that get you killed. Being being accused of being in, a member of the intelligentsia could get you killed in this country not very long ago. And so what we see, what we see, of course, is similar. They're not exactly the same, but similar patterns of divide and conquer. Um, which one sees it already in various online places of um, people who believe in the what I call the mask of the beast um, attacking people who don't and um, you can see how easy it is it's the same it's the same uh, the same playbook the same basic mechanisms it's just it's it's uh, I would describe the West now really as being a, a kind of a very weird mixture of Stalinism um, McDonald's and a concentration camp and a psychiatric hospital. It's, it's just bizarre. It's the bizarreness of it because obviously under the Soviet system it was all very grey and boring and nobody had anything. Oh, not having anything that's coming, that's coming to a, a store near you really soon um, as well. Of course, we're not quite there yet. Um, I have mentioned this before, but when I first went to Russia, this would be 1991, 1990 actually, it was the end of the the Soviet period, kind of hardcore Soviet period. It was what was called perestroika, glasnost, and all this stuff. But still, it was a Soviet economy. Nothing worked. There was nothing in the shops. And people used to... <laughs> the restaurants would close for lunch. The restaurants would close for lunch and that wasn't even the thing that was that struck me most about it was that russians i would say look there's a restaurant closing for lunch whole line of people standing outside in the freezing cold watching watching the restaurant staff having lunch in the middle of the cafe or whatever it was just with the doors locked not able to get in to have lunch and it was the fact that I would say this to my Russian friends and they couldn't understand why I thought there was anything strange about this. Well, they have to have lunch too. They are workers, you know. I'm thinking, you know. Anyway, this this will all be coming soon and, uh, it, because some of the characteristics kind of, they, 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 they repeat and repeat and repeat. Anyway, going back to my sort of main point here is that this is a division and there's there's going to be a real division um, another sort of talks about the, the the day the day of judgment, which is um, 
sort of ennobling or raising and bringing down. So the people who seem to be at the top now, at least according to this book, you know, this isn't for very long. I did notice our good friend Tony Blair. Tony Blair prostituted himself out his entire life and um, energetically, you know, sort of... I don't go for, I guess you'd call him for, for the actual rulers. He's offered, you know, he's got sort of, he's a sort of, I don't know, one of the, the lads you send out to get, to get your coffee, isn't he? He's that sort of chap for the New World Order. Anyway, they've just given him, they've just given him a knighthood, which he's going to take, of course. Um, and one of the reasons why they do this is because it, it signals to the next, the next lot of, Little little men, I think that's probably the right way of calling them. Um, that they're going to be safe too. You, you just keep serving this system, and you know you'll be safe. Because if they ever persecuted or prosecuted rather these people for their actual crimes, and and Tony Blair's by no means alone, but he's certainly by any objective criteria, you know, a criminal. And up, he's, a, he's a criminal, um, and a mass murderer, and all kinds of other things as well. They, um, the next bunch wouldn't do it because they would politicians. I'm talking about career politicians. They're nothing if not awake to um, how the wind is blowing. They, they'd they realise that you, you can't serve this system because it will come and get you on the back end. Anyway, so Tony thinks that he's been sort of, he's on the right side of this line. Um, and from his, by his lights, I suppose he's right. And But this is not according to the bigger picture and what i'm trying to do in these series of talks is give people a better a bigger perspective because this system especially a materialistic liberal so-called rationalistic system is all about it's all about how much and now there's no concept of um, any kind of alignment or allegiance to something greater than oneself it's all about what they call humanism and um this isn't, as I've mentioned in previous talks, this isn't how traditional man thought for thousands of years. This is an aberration. Have been through it before in some uh, for some times. Actually, as those societies collapse, that's 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 where we are. We're at the collapse phase. So now we're going to get into the the division that matters to continue. Faces that today will be joyous. You see this this corresponds with faces that day will be humbled verse 8 faces that day will be joyous with their striving well pleased in high gardens they hear therein no vain speech just stop there they hear therein no vain speech this is one of the verses that really speaks to me we're surrounded by vain speech lies untruth dissimulation um won't it be wonderful not to have that anymore? In a way, it requires almost constant vigilance and constant energy to filter out the, the lies, and that's, there's no other word for it. But they hear therein no vain speech. That means no one's going to lie. No one's going to be talking about anything other than truth. And just for that alone, I think, I think you know, God, God, you know, blesses us with that i think that that that's going to be something that just the absence of lies is going to be such a benefit such a, a relief um to continue therein a flowing spring therein couches raised and cups set and cushions arrayed and carpets outspread so this is the the basic division and we have this in many instances in the Quran between you know the companions of the left the companions of the right and 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 sort of comparable divisions and as I say we're going through a, a satanic aping or emulation or almost preemptive usurpation of this type of thing but we've been through it before as as I say fight put you know offsetting the the so-called bourgeoisie and, and the proletariat or whatever it is um socialism materialism it's not just socialism com uh, capitalism is also materialistic fundamentally it's not very they're not very creative they're, they're, they're kind of locked into things and it all becomes very uh soulless 
a lot of a lot of commit people commit suicide um, because it is so soulless. They they may not be able to express why they feel so alone and completely disconnected from everything that is fundamentally real to them. But it is because, um, well, to put it into computer computer uh, computer video game terms, human beings are analog. We're not um, we're not digital. We don't we don't divide down into ones and zeros black and white little squares pixels no matter how refined there is a we are of an analog nature you know there is a there is a subtlety and a um a variety and a uh a sort of an ethereal sense which is not only a kind of a bolt-on in the case of human beings it is what we are we are able to infer to read symbol to see something behind just you know the shapes of of life to read the subtext language and what a materialistic system does is deny all of that it denies the twilight it, it denies it and it's very 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 hard to hold on to it um, in in the face of total denial and going back to what i've been talking about in the last couple of videos this gaslighting and it's gaslighting psychopathic gaslighting that the present system practices as part of its modus operandi and certainly communism practiced and and it's not just about the psychological part of it because it gets to the killing fields real quick as i've said before solzhenitsyn i don't know if he was correct but he certainly quoted as uh, citing around 60 million people 60 million people murdered by the soviet system it's just machine they weren't all just they weren't all shot but um collective farming starvation enforced starvation planned starvation in ukraine uh lazar kaganovich that's what he did i mean they really did murder six million people they really did die it was just and, and they didn't know because there was no food they took the food away a bit like what the british did to the irish these these systems they they they, they repeat anyway now we get into the third part of this particular surah verse 17 Will they then not look at the camels, how they were created, and at the sky, how it was raised, and at the mountains, how they were erected, and at the earth, how it was spread out? Now, just a couple of points here. If you look at a camel, it's a very unlikely, I mean, I suppose any, any creature is unlikely when you really think about it, but a camel is almost pointedly un, unlikely. If you look at how it's hooves work it's, you know, it's capacity i mean there are different types of uh, of camel obviously there's a double hump, humped camel and single humped camel i'm sure there are lots of subtleties about camels that i'm totally unaware of but uh, i've seen different types of camels in my life camels you might see in mongolia for example which are double hump, humped back and then what you might more typically see in in, in north africa or or Arabic countries, which are more single humped. I mean, if you're if you're a camel expert, you know, feel free to correct me in the, in the comments down below. But that's that's my understanding of it. But you know, it's correctly termed the ship of the desert. God created an animal that would see man across these vast expanses, and um, we are called upon just just to consider that and uh, to continue. And the sky, how it was raised. <coughs> excuse me and it says in verse in sort of 50 do they not uh, look at the sky above them how we uh, built it and how we beautified it we have all of this um, riot of evidence around us this isn't a difficult thing to to infer we're meant to infer it going back to the symbols thing only man only man can see can infer from a symbol something that he hasn't seen but he can deduce on the basis of that evidence um, that sort of ability to read symbolically which is something that this system materialistic system totally negates in every single way but these are things that are important to anyone with any sort of spiritual appetite or hunger and now we get to the last the last part of the surah So remind thou, thou art but one reminding, thou art not over them an overseer. 
I'll just stop and hit this point. Now, I'm not here to invade in against the traditionalist. It's not my main thing. There are, there are, and there have been um, channels which which focus on that. And I suppose that's because people they ca they come from that sort of background. Uh, I don't. I come from culturally culturally. I'm Church of England. Um, in terms, of, in terms of cultural religions, so I don't, I don't come from that background at all. So I wasn't oppressed by the traditionalist growing up, and I don't have some sort of, you know, huge pent up um, resentment or whatever it is uh, against him. I just find him, he's just somebody else that doesn't make any sense to me, just like the Jehovah's Witness or, you know, the Scientologist. He's just one of many, and also ran in that sense but i do have to critique him because he claims uh monopoly rights uh over a book that quite clearly in my opinion or according to my analysis he doesn't understand and not only does he not understand it, he won't let anybody else at it which is really more of a problem so just this thing thou art not over them an overseer now this word really is related to the verb to write it's an a, in the sense of a manager, somebody with a clipboard, you know, oh yes, yeah, so 27 of those, 30 of those, that, this, that's what this word means, okay? And it's saying to the recipient of the Quran, you, you, you're not over them in this sense. Now, that really conflicts with the underlying or narrative that the traditionalist tries to push on you, because it has it that actually Muhammad was an overseer over over everyone else, that it was his job to make sure that everybody else comported with this thing. Um, let's take, for example, God forbid that you leave the, whatever they call the religion of Islam. Um, currently, I mean, they, they may be watering this down a little bit in the West uh, until the West collapses, of course. This is just a holding pattern. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, traditionally, the, the punishment for that has been has been death. So, I mean, you can't get more of an overseer than that, can you? And yet you have examples in the Quran. It says, uh, you know, there is no compulsion in, in the in the doctrine. Um, again, when the, if believing women slip away from you to the unbelieving men, nothing in there about killing them. The next time you find them, chop their heads off. No, nothing at all. So, there's, there are huge conflicts, and I do outline quite a few of those in 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 my in my broader work. So it's quite clear that Muhammad was many things, but he was a messenger, he was a warner. But according to this book, the book which the traditionalist claims as his foundational scripture, but quite clearly doesn't treat in that light, it says that and thou art not over them an overseer. So I just thought I'd hit that point because it's quite interesting. To continue, but whoso turns away and denies, God will punish him with the greatest punishment. Okay, so let's say somebody. Let's say let's let's just assume for argument's sake that this cultural narrative, which is a changing, shifting sand actually, which variously arrogates to itself the term Islam and then attacks everyone else on that basis. Let's just let's just say yes it's right let's just assume that it is correct in every single regard although it's, poss it's impossible because it's conflicting narratives it says that whoso turns away and denies god will punish him with the greatest punishment so let's say those women who slipped away they've done a terrible thing god will punish them it's not it's not your job it's not muhammad's job but look the traditionalist is arrogating to himself something which it claiming claiming to follow the prophet and then attacking you because you don't agree with his you know his um narrative cobbled together after the fact he's not following it not not in any real sense um and god says that he will if there's any punishment to be done on that in in this regard he's the one to do it so it seems to me not only heretical but somewhat um ah oh, what's the word blasphemous yes but whoso turns away and denies, God will punish him with the greatest punishment. To us is their return, and then upon us is their reckoning. Again, the division. Anyway, I just thought I would try to highlight some of the correlations, albeit in 
not very well organized format between what we're going through now, what the traditionalist does and, and has done, not all traditionalists, that's not true, um, but, but some, um, and what this book says, because there is a tension between these things. And according to this book, you know, to us is their return, then upon us is their reckoning. And this includes me, you, the traditionalist, these crazy green haired ladies filling our children's heads with nonsense in the public school system, everyone. So that's according to this book. So I just thought I would sort of make that as plain as I can and share it. And I hope, uh, hope that it helps. Anyway, that's all for now. I will try to, and what I'm trying to do just as a bit of housekeeping is, as I'm sure people are aware, is get through the remaining sort of stuff that I, that between 50 and 100 and, uh, and 114 and to finish reading the God Protocol onto audio. Those are my two focuses right now. I'm currently in another fast, 10 day fast, just Quranic fast, it's not very difficult at the moment, the daylight hours not that long, but you know, restricting what I'm eating and trying to stay closer than normal as a form of um, rebellion actually <laughs> against this. I mean, it's not the only reason, but it certainly feels that it's a revolutionary act in this time of generalized materialism. So. I just want to say hello and uh, blessings to all those people who are keeping this fast with me. And uh, yeah, I think I'll just leave it there. That's all for now. If you're listening on YouTube, you can download my full translation of the Quran and all other work free using the button in the top right hand corner or buy the hard copy there at 10% less than on Amazon. You can download the audio from my YouTube videos to your mobile device using the links in the drop down below. I recommend meetquranites.com to connect with other Quran alone believers. Like if you like, comment if you have something constructive to say, and subscribe to get more each week. And use the link in the drop down below to donate if you would like to help me keep doing this. And remember, this life is short, eternity is long. If you want good trees, plant good seeds. <laughs>